Hello and welcome to episode 13 of the Tyra Cycling Podcast, the video podcast series that brings to you insights and news from the leading lights in the Tyra Cycling sector. I'm Richard Wilson, a contributor to Tyra Rubber Cycling, and as ever, Ewan Scott, the magazine's editor, is with me to help me along the way. How are you doing today, Ewan? I'm doing fine. Excellent. Well, to get started with Ewan, could you tell our viewers what we've got planned for today's episode? Today we're talking with KJ Lee from Lee Tire and Oil in Malaysia. As the Indian market starts to tighten up, I, people in Europe are looking for markets elsewhere in, in the Far East, and, the, and Malaysia is a potential market. But uh, we're going to hear from KJ Lee about uh, his own company in Malaysia and a little bit about the market. It's uh, quite revealing, I think. Okay, interesting. So as you've alluded to there, it's, you know, it's another um, paralysis project to focus on. And then, and once again, in Malaysia, we've, we've obviously touched upon that in our series before. Um, is there anything particularly that you're looking to find out from KJ Lee and their operation in Malaysia? I think we're interested in the realities of the market in Malaysia. There are people who think, yeah, we'll just ship tires to Malaysia or Vietnam or wherever without considering the implications of what actually happens when the tires get there, if they get there. So uh, it'd be interesting to see what uh, KJ has to tell us. Definitely. Well, I'm sure KJ will, you know, will, will give us some interesting, interesting facts and give us some interesting knowledge about how the market, market plays and what the forces are like there. So without any more waiting around, um, sit tight and we have the interview with KJ Lee from Lee Tire and Oil coming up right now. Today we're speaking to KJ Lee from uh, uh, LT Oil uh, in Malaysia. Uh, you're based in Melbourne and uh, you're handling the import-export for the, the company. Can you tell us what the situation is regarding uh, the supply of tariffs to, uh, to Malaysia? Well, I would say at the moment, you know, there's a surplus everywhere, it seems like, because, you know, of the, um, the recent collapse of the, the Indian market. Um, but I mean, you know, they are trying to get back up on their feet, whereas, you know, the rest of the world, I think, is just um, a, a, a huge stockpile everywhere so in terms of finding stocks as compared to the same time last year it has been fairly easy i have to say you know instead of trying to actively looking for something or somewhere someone um now we actually have multiple people knocking on doors every day um and i mean so in a way it's good for us you know we can pick and choose and you know we have uh, been able to um, um, negotiate, you know, on how we want the ties to be, you know, what type and how we want them. Um, so I'll say uh, the, mar the market at the moment has been in our favor, but, you know, things are changing. And uh, I guess just in the, in the past day or two, there's been quite a few, quite a bit of, um, of um, fluctuation in the market, so to speak. Yeah, so... Yeah, you know, um, yeah, that, that, that's also coming from your, your um, article, you know, Indian um, government or the customs trying to, you know, stop the, um, the um, bell tire going, going into India. And, you know, with the upcoming timeline, um, Australian government has set on um, to ban or export. We're all just scratching our heads, you know, on how to, you know, make changes and adapt to the, to the, to the market in, the, in the, the near future. Okay, so, so Malaysia, and your, your company in, in Malaysia, still has a demand for used tires. Yeah, so, I mean, you know, um, we, we run a, a, a pyrolysis plant in, in northern Malaysia, um, Penang, and um, so we have a capacity each month of around 2,000 metric tons of tire. 
actually, yeah, that's what we need to, you know, to, to, um, to meet our capacity of production. Um, so we do have, you know, local collections and that's actually the main aim initially to try and, you know, get, get rid of all the tires in Northern Malaysia. However, you know, logistics and I mean, just in terms of volume of tire that's, that we are able to collect, it's just not enough. And hence we have, you know, all these imports from overseas into Malaysia. So yeah, the demand is always there. The demand will not go away as long as, you know, we are running the factory. Okay, and, and you have no issues with finding markets for your, your uh, pyrolysis oil or your recovered carbon black? Uh, it's, a, it, it's a huge fluctuation as well. I mean, this, you know, this, this year, 2020 has been just, you know, it's not a good year for everyone, I have to say. Um, yeah, so, you know, demand for any kind of product has plummeted and hence, you know, it's a chain reaction, you know, a domino effect. Everything is, you know, everything has a, um, a lower demand. So, you know, in terms of Thai oil, the demand has dropped as well. And um, when demand has dropped, you know, the prices will go down and it's just difficult on everyone. Yeah. Okay, but with your recovered carbon black, I, I, I see from your website, that you produce about 25% recovered carbon black. Uh, is that suitable for use in the, uh, the, in the Malaysian tire market? So I, I guess, you know, there's a huge spectrum of things carbon black can be used in. And I guess it, it, there, there's also a huge spectrum of, you know, of, um, different carbon black that's been produced. I mean, for our carbon black, we have, you know, we have ran some, you know, some lab tests on it. Uh, we know that it's very, um, that there are a lot of impurities and probably, you know, further work needs to be done in order to make, make it usable or, yeah, make it usable in higher, you know, higher tech, you know, um, industries at the moment with the current form, you know, we haven't, we haven't um, got any plans to further refine or do anything about it, but to just clear our stock. So really, you know, the, the, our, our main client are from, um, you know, cement factories and um, yeah, basically um, just using this carbon black as a fuel. Right, so so your your carbon black has been used as a furnace fuel at the cement kilns or, or similar, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah. In in general, is how many pyrolysis operations are the oper certified pyrolysis operations operating in uh, in Malaysia? To to my knowledge, to to my knowledge, in the northern parts of Malaysia, I mean, I, I'm speaking specifically in the state of you know Penang and Kedah, not speaking for other other states. They are just one. There is just one. Yeah. And that's us with you know proper credentials. And it, it, it did take a very long time. And I guess you know it was during a time where um you know the demand or rather the the yeah the demand for higher clearing was there and you know when um, I guess um, when it was fair, uh, relatively easier as compared to now to, to get you know all the departments aligned and you know to uh, to sign all the documents to provide us with the license um, to run the plan whereas you know now it's really really difficult and hence you have a lot of you know um, smaller smaller plants that are deep in the jungle somewhere. Yeah, and, and Malaysian government, you know, has been doing a great job in terms of, you know, just trying to regulate and, you know, trying to either close or trying to, you know, see what they can do, you know, to, I guess, to, to, to regulate this market, so to speak, because there's been a lot of um, uh, unintentional uh, pollutions 
you know, in the forest, in the river, where you have, you know, um, different villages or different towns that are nearby. So yeah, that's been quite a quite a, quite a problem yeah, in recent years. Yeah, we we, we saw uh, a lot of publicity about uh, the incident uh, at Saint Kim Kim. The, that 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 hasn't helped the industry in general because it yeah. paints everybody the same color, uh, and uh, it makes life difficult for you guys trying to do it right. Yeah, and and uh, I have to say, you know, even in the past day or two, you know, there's been reports of, you know, multiple factories being closed down because of a new wave of rivers that's been contaminated, you know, somewhere, and so it's sort of like a um, a warning to us as well, you know, to to make sure we keep our you know our 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 plant clean, because um, we know that once a report goes out you know, um, the Department of Environment would definitely knock on our door because that's when they go out to search for anyone that they can, that, that's uh, in breach of the regulation, you know, if there's any, you know, any pollution or any oil that has um, leaked into the drains or, you know, um, the surrounding soil, then, yeah, that, that will cause a lot of problem, yeah. Okay, just to conclude, um, can we go back to the uh, the import of tires and, mm. and what you would would specifically be looking for would you be looking if you were looking to import tires would you mm. be looking at car tires truck tires mm. uh, um for our reactor you know it has um it, it's designed to feed belt tires because um, we have a, a huge, you know, a huge um, entrance into the reactor that, that, that we can, you know, have even OTRs because uh, OTR has been a huge problem everywhere, you know, trying to get, get rid of them. And um, even two years ago, you know, when I, when I was looking around for tires, you know, including OTRs, there were plans to, you know, find a machine that, that's able to cut any OTI into half. And I was told in New Zealand, for example, you know, in the whole country, there was just one, you know, back then, uh, the one machine that's able to chop them up, chop them into half. But um, so I guess that, you know, that, that was the initial idea. But, you know, like I said, you know, with the, the, the changing of market nowadays, Governments are trying to ban import export of belt tire. I mean, personally, I don't see the reason behind it, but I guess, um, um, yeah, well, for whatever reason. In, in terms of, you know, strata tire, I think that's what the governments are trying to push. And I mean, there are abundance of strata tires now, but our, our reactor just can't have them. Because um, with belt tires, we don't we, we just chuck the whole belt into the reactor, or rather, we you know, every day we use about two and a half containers, so roughly sixty to seventy metric tons of tire in the reactors. And uh, what they do is when they tumble around like a washing machine, um, these wire they clump together, and these carbon black they just they just fall apart and get sucked into you know, a, a chamber where we can pack them. Whereas these metal wire, because they are in huge clumps, we can just remove them as one clump or multiple smaller clumps. Whereas when you, um, when you get all these shredded tires, they are in fragments and it just become um, stuck in our condenser, in our pipeline and goes everywhere. And uh, it, it also poses as a um, you know a, a safety hazard as well for the for the for the workers that are you know digging you know cleaning the reactors and all that, and so I guess we were just having um you know with suppliers this morning we were just having this conversation. Probably what we can do in the future down the line is to have the wires removed before you know shredding these tires, but. I guess you know in the next few months it's going to be an interesting time because um, there's going to be a lot of change, uh, changes within the market. 
um, whether you know whether we are looking into you know more of Southeast Asia um, or or even East Asia, you know, to look for bail tires outside of Australia. Yeah, so that's that's yeah. That is excellent news. You know, excellent news and a really good breakdown for us of what's happening in Malaysia. There are a lot of people in the, in the UK in particular. Uh, mm -hmm desperately trying to find new outlets and uh, I'm sure some of them will be interested in talking to you. Yeah well, well I mean in the, you know in the past two months there's been a few inquiries here and there you know um, and the, the, the thing is Malaysian um, Malaysia customs has um, has this import tariff of 25% of the of the tire value you know, um, say, you know, uh, for a given container, if it's a um, thousand US dollars, well, usually it's much lesser. You know, we usually just say that every, every time it's $20, um, you know, in, it, uh, bringing that into Malaysia, the custom will, you know, tax the container for 25% of the, the invoice. And um, with UK, from my understanding, there is a free trade agreement with Malaysia, and that makes everything so difficult. Whereas, you know, from Australia, from um, New Zealand, uh, from India, um, and Japan, you know, um, they they have free trade agreement with Malaysia, and 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 it makes import from these countries so much cheaper. You know, yeah. So it it is it has been difficult um, trying to get stock from UK. I have to say, otherwise it, it, that that there is a lot of you know bail tires from UK. Thank you very much for your time, KJ. There you have it. I interviewed with KJ Lee from Lee Tire and Oil. Ewan, that was another expertly managed interview. Um, I didn't realise KJ Lee was actually based out of Melbourne, Australia. Um, I suppose it just shows the international nature of the operation. Um, how do you think this, this helps them in, for, in terms of their business? Well, it certainly puts them in an interesting position. Uh, KJ is uh, in, he's responsible for the buying and selling of product. And Australia has introduced this uh, ban on the export of tyres. They're, they're, they're bringing that in shortly. And uh, KJ has to find other markets, which is music to the ears of uh, collectors in Europe. Unfortunately, as KJ has said, there is no trade agreement with Malaysia and there are tariffs at the Malaysian end. So shipping tyres to Malaysia isn't going to be quite as easy as some people seem to think it is. Interesting. And, you know, that I suppose, you know, that puts up a really, you know, interesting business challenge, challenge for them. I'm sure they'll be able to count. I'm sure they'll be able to counter it. And I'm sure they're already making plans to, to counteract that issue. Um, but, you know, moving away from that aspect, though, obviously, this is the second interview we've done in a short time um, regarding paralysis projects in Malaysia. Um, do you think we're seeing a change of dynamics in, in Malaysia? I, I think that uh, the Malaysian market, that, as a matter of fact, the, the whole of Southeast Asia is, is starting to, to waken up to the, uh, the realisation that the environment matters. And it's one thing to pyrolyze waste plastics and rubber to, to produce oil, but they have to do it in a, a more environmentally friendly manner. Lee Tire and Oil, have a, a modern plant with full environmental certification. So they're in Penang in Malaysia, they appear to be in the lead, uh, taking the lead and showing people how it should be done. Without doubt, I mean, that will be, you know, I'll keep a keen eye to, to see on how that, how that develops for sure. And, you know, and I'm sure we'll, we'll talk to other people who are setting up similar projects in Asia over the coming, over the coming months. Um, but anyway, Ewan, thanks for your time again. Thanks for joining me. 
And we hope the viewers and listeners enjoyed the latest installment of the Tyre Recycling Podcast. We'll be back very shortly with episode 14.